Welcome back everybody. This is Mrs. K's way of solving missing angles using algebra part 2 or as they say in French part 2 in Spanish part dos. Um don't know that many other languages, but we'll just keep it simple. We are going to be looking at our practice 6.2, example number 30. We're going to be using ratios and our knowledge of angles in order to find missing angles. So, here's what the problem asks. If line AB and line CD, or line AB and line CD, are two intersecting lines, find the values of angle P and angle Q. Now, we're also given the information, the ratio of angle 1 to angle 2 is 3 to 1. We'll need this information because obviously just knowing angle 1 and 2 doesn't necessarily tell us about P and Q. But we can use our understanding of vertical angles and supplementary angles in order to help us solve this problem. So the first thing we do is we want to look at angle 1 and angle 2. We notice that these are also happen to be vertical, which remember are across from, and these happen to be vertical to angle 4, and angle 1 is vertical to angle 3. Now this is important because it lets us know that the measure of angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. They are the same measure. And angle 2 and angle 4 are also congruent, so we'll be able to use that information to help us. So because we know that 1 and 3 are congruent, that means that whatever the measure of angle 1 is, and the ratio that it is, is going to be the same for angle 3. So if we know that it's 3 parts for angle 1, it's also 3 parts for angle 3. And for 2, angle 2, we know that if that's 1 part, that then our angle 4 is also 1 part. Now this is really important because now we technically don't even need angle 1 and angle 2 to solve this problem. Finding the vertical angles have allowed us to be able to no longer need angle 1 and angle 2, but we can just focus on angle 3 and angle 4, which we also have realized that since they are located on a line, that these two angles right here happen to also be supplementary, or equal to 180 degrees. Now that we remember that we are looking at our angles and trying to find both P and Q, we are reminded about that idea of this ratio. This ratio is really important because we know that the measure of P plus the measure of angle Q is going to equal 180 degrees. Well, when we look at this right here, the ratio of 3 to 1 means that the measure of this angle 4, or the angle P, happens to be 1 to the 3 angles that happen to be in Q. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, if this is a 1 value or X value for angle 4, that means that there are also 3 X values for angle 3. Now, we can write that as 4X, but we can also write that as our measure of P plus the measure of Q is equal to 180 degrees. Now, luckily we realized that if we were to write that as a equation, that that means that there are three X's in purple and one X in orange. So all together, if we combine these like terms, we know that four measures of this angle X or this unknown angle will equal 180 degrees. That's just reminding us that P plus Q is equal to 180. Now we've now created a one step equation, so all we need to do is divide both sides by 4 to get our variable X alone. Thus, X is equal to, whoops, 45. So that means that measure of angle P is equal to 45 degrees since that was just equal to 1x 
And then we know that angle Q, which was equal to 3x, or 3 times 45, happens to equal 135 degrees. So in total, we figured out that Q is equal to 135 degrees and X is equal to 45. Now, if we were to add up both 30, 135 degrees and 45, it would equal the supplementary angles of 180 since they are located on this same line. I know this video was a little long and a little bit confusing, but definitely we will be working on this in class. But for all your hard work today, here is a fun, exclusive video of Cali and a laser pointer. Well, hope you guys enjoy that. We will see you tomorrow. Study hard and make sure that you go back and take really detailed notes because you'll need it for the next part of our unit. Thanks, guys. Bye.